Hi everyone. Tonight's video is on the citric acid or Krebs cycle. And that is pictured here. The Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle happens in the matrix of the mitochondria. And if you recall, that is the innermost space of the mitochondria. So let's look at the Krebs cycle in a much closer view. So pyruvate moves into the mitochondria. As you recall from the glycolysis video, pyruvate is what is produced at the end of glycolysis. And there are two pyruvate molecules for every original glucose. This is called pyruvic acid here in this graphic. Pyruvic acid and pyruvate are the same molecule. So in the first reaction, we have what's called a decarboxylation going on. So each pyruvate loses one carbon dioxide to form a molecule called acetyl-CoA. In that reaction, two more electrons are removed from each pyruvate and placed onto NADH. So we've got another NADH holding each one, holding on to two electrons. The acetyl-CoA is a two carbon molecule, and that's what's indicated here with these two orange dots. These each indicate the number of carbons in the molecule. That is what is going to enter our citric acid or our Krebs cycle. And remember, these two carbons came from pyruvate and originally came from glucose. So acetyl-CoA is actually going to combine with an, a molecule called OAA, which is a four compound molecule. So these carbons plus these carbons make a total of six carbons and it forms citric acid which is where this cycle got one of its names, the citric acid cycle. So this six carbon compound is now going to go through the citric acid cycle. In four separate steps, electrons are going to be harvested from intermediates in this cycle and placed onto the electron holders NAD plus to become NADH and another electron holder FAD to become FADH2. And that happens in four separate steps. FAD and FADH2 are analogous to NAD plus and NADH. They are simply different electron holders that pick up electrons in this one specific step of the Krebs or citric acid cycle. The final two carbons, two from each pyruvate, are released as CO2 in the Krebs cycle. So by this point down here in the Krebs cycle, there's actually no carbons left from the original glucose. What we do have from the original glucose is all the electrons being held onto by the electron holders. And as if you recall, the energy in glucose was in the electrons. So even though all of the carbons are gone, we don't care. That's not what we wanted. We wanted those electrons and we have those electrons. There's also one step where ATP is made here in the Krebs cycle. So for every original glucose, there's two pyruvates which means there's two more ATPs made for each pyruvate. Then the final part of this uh, cycle is meant to regenerate that four carbon compound, which is gonna come along and pick up the next acetyl-CoA to come in from the pyruvate from the next glucose that's been going through glycolysis. So what you have to remember for this cycle is there are two pyruvates for every original glucose. So everything that's produced here you have to multiply by two to get to how many are produced for the original glucose. So let's look at our overall balanced equation for respiration here, where we had glucose plus six oxygen goes to form six waters, six CO2s, and 36, maybe 38 ATPs. We no longer have any of the glucose. That's all been made into CO2. Have we used any oxygen yet? We really haven't used any oxygen yet. Have we produced any, high, uh, I'm sorry, water yet? We produced one molecule of water, but not enough, not enough to balance the equation. And we've only made four ATPs. So at the end of the Krebs cycle, the only thing left from the original glucose are the electrons being held onto NADH and FADH2, and we've made a very small amount of ATP. We've also produced all of the CO2, that is all done now, but we have a lot more work to do to make the ATPs. And that's gonna happen in the final phase of respiration, the electron transport chain. 
So what you should know from this video, you should know where the Krebs cycle occurs. You should know what goes in and what comes out. So what goes in is our pyruvate, our ADP, NAD+, and FAD. What comes out is the CO2, the FADH2, the NADH, and ATP. You should know the relative amounts of ADP and NADH made. Is it a little or is it a lot? It's really a very little amount of ATP, but we've made a lot of NADH and FADH2 in this cycle. Did we use any oxygen? No. Is there carbon dioxide produced? Yes. This is where all the carbon dioxide is produced in the process of cellular respiration. So that's all for tonight.